guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about, is there a better medical coding certification? If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so <laughs> there seems to be some confusion in the comments lately about the medical coding certifications. There are some folks that are asking which one is better and is this credential better than this one and which one should I get? Okay. So let me explain something first. There are two major medical coding associations. There's the American Health Information Management Association, or AHIMA, and then there's AAPC, the American Academy of Professional Coders. These are two separate organizations. You only need to be certified with one. There are some schools that will push people to get certified with both associations. This is unnecessary. You're doubling up on, on, uh, on your credentials when you don't even need to, okay? So hopefully I can explain this to you in a way that will help you to choose, all right? So here's the thing, guys. Whichever association you decide to go with is entirely up to you. There's benefits to both of them. There's negatives to either one of them, okay, guys? It really all depends on how you're looking at it. Okay, for some... They say, well, AHIMA, they don't do a lot of things in a group where AAPC does. And then some people say, well, AAPC charges a, a yearly fee that AHIMA doesn't. So there's a lot of differences between the two. So I encourage you to do your research. But there are four main medical coding certifications that employers look for. There's the gold standard of medical coding certifications, the CCS, the Certified Coding Specialist. And I will get into what that means here in a minute, okay? Then there's the CCA, the Certified Coding Associate, the CCSP, the Certified Coding Specialist Physician Based. These three are with AHIMA, okay? Then there's uh, the CPC, the Certified Professional Coder, and that is a credential with AAPC, okay? So AAPC has a CPC, AHIMA has the CCS, the CCA, and the CCSP, okay? So there's all of those. Now you hear me say, that the CCS is the gold standard of medical coding credentials because it is. This is an industry distinction. This is not a blue said this, this is what I think. This is what the industry is saying. When you look at the job listings for medical coders, there's many, like 98% of the job listings that are looking for medical coders specifically ask for the CCS. And why? Because the CCS says that you have mastered, you're not just entry level, that you have mastered inpatient coding and outpatient coding, which is two completely different mindsets. This is two completely different things, okay? With the inpatient side, you have to know the uh, ICD-10 PCS, you have to know the inpatient coding rules. With um, the outpatient side, you have to know CPT and you have to understand evaluation and management. And of course, you have to understand ICD-10 CM for both of them. But this CCS credential says that you have mastered both inpatient and outpatient coding. So this means with this credential that you are a well-rounded coder, that they could put you anywhere and that you would be able to know how to code because again, you have the mastery certification, the CCS. Now, if you have no experience, does this mean that you can't sit for it? If you have no experience, you can sit for it. It does not require you to have experience. It says it's recommended. Recommended is something completely different. Recommended means if you have it, that's great. If you don't have it, it's still okay. You can still take the test. There's plenty of people that take the CCS that don't have any experience. They just studied a lot and then they were able to pass. I've had people who have said, Blue, your independent study video helped me to study for my CCS exam and that was what I used to help me study and I passed. So there, it is possible, guys. But again, you have to be putting in the time to be able to sit for that certification. So again, even if you have no experience, if you're brand new to the field, you can still sit for that certification. Is it a tough exam? Yes, because again, it is considered the mastery. Now, if you don't want to sit for this yet, and if you don't want to sit for it because 
you are personally not ready. Not because somebody else told you it's really hard or that they failed it a bunch of times and they have to keep taking it. And you decide for yourself that, well, you know, I've been studying, but I don't feel like I'm strong enough yet. Let me go with the CCA. There is nothing wrong with doing that, okay? I had the CCA for 13 years. The CCA is considered an entry-level medical coding certification. Again, this too says that you know inpatient and outpatient, but the difference between the CCS and the CCA is that the CCA says that you have the entry-level competence. This has the most domains of all the medical coding certification exams, okay? I'm talking about the medical coding certification exam, so the, one of the four. <laughs> um, the CCA has the most because, again, it is saying that this person has entry-level competence to code for inpatient or outpatient. They can apply anywhere, essentially, uh, because they have that entry-level competence. There is nothing wrong with the CCA. I, again, I had it for 13 years. It is a very strong credential, and people who get it have to study really hard to get it. Uh, it is a two-hour exam, but it packs a punch in those two hours. So if you are saying, well, I think I could take that one, and I think I could do really well, then that will open the doors for you to be able to apply for inpatient positions. Now, if you say, well, Blue, um, all the inpatient positions are saying that they want experience. All of the jobs are going to ask for experience because they don't want to have to train. But it, what makes a credential really great is not actually the credential itself, it is the coder themselves. Because a coder can have any number of credentials. They could actually have a string of credentials and not know how to code. It is true. I have seen it. I have seen it several times in the industry where people get so excited because they know they can purchase a, a, a test prep take a test and then all of a sudden they get brand new credentials after their name and it makes them look more knowledgeable. No, what makes you more knowledgeable is the, your actual application of your knowledge. That's what makes you more knowledgeable. There's people who are not even certified, who should be certified because they're smart enough to be certified, but for whatever reason, they don't want to sit for a certification. They should have a certification and they don't have it yet. But they should take it because, again, it would open more doors for them, okay? The same thing is if you got the CCS or the same thing if you got the CCA. These are going to open doors for you. Open doors to the inpatient side or the outpatient side. If you don't feel confident in the inpatient side, which is common because you have to build those codes from sometimes from, from very little, <laughs> to all the way to the seven characters. And sometimes it's got all the whole seven characters already done. Uh, it really all depends on the code itself. But if you are thinking that, you know, well, you know, everybody says I should get the CCS, but I'm scared and I don't want to take it uh, because I'm not really strong in, in ICD-10 PCS. Okay, then there's other options for you. There's the CCSP, which is a HEMA's version of an outpatient only certification. This just says that you have mastered the um, ICD 10 CM, of course, and the um, CPT and the Higgs Picks, that you know how to use all three of these manuals. That's what the CCSP says. And employers will look for it, employers do ask for it. Again, the person who has a CCSP says that they are competent in coding outpatient coding. So they could do evaluation and management. They can do procedures, major procedures, minor procedures. They know how to apply modifiers and that kind of thing. So that's the CCSP. So if you're saying, well, you know, I didn't really like that inpatient side. I'm not ready for the CCA and I'm definitely not ready for the CCS. So let me just go ahead and take the CCSP. That's great. Then that means that you can apply for any outpatient position that you want to. Okay. And if you're, if you're sticking with the HEMA, you don't have to be a member every single year. Now, if you are with AAPC or if you want to go with AAPC, for whatever reason you choose to go with AAPC and you want to take that CPC, the Certified Professional Coder, the Certified Professional Coder says the same thing 
that the CCSP says in the fact that you are competent to code for the outpatient side, that you know how to code, of course, from ICD-10-CM, but you also know how to use the CPT book and the Higgs PIX level two manual, okay? You know how to use all of these things. So again, it says that you know how to use evaluation and management, you know how to use modifiers, and that's on the CPC. So the CPC and the CCSP are both outpatient. Now, the, the difference between the CCSP and the CPC is that the CPC, if you have no prior experience in uh, medical coding at all, you will be a CPCA, a Certified Professional Coder Apprentice, okay? And this apprentice designation is good for two years. Until you get your two years of experience, then you can remove the apprentice and you'll be a full-fledged CPC. Now, if you're going through an, a program with AAPC and you also complete Practicode, you can accelerate the removal of the apprentice status. Okay, so sometimes when people graduate and they finish uh, Practicode, then they're immediately a CPC. But here's the thing. Even if you are completely a CPC, you still have no experience, okay? Especially if you're brand new. So don't be in a rush, guys. People do hire CPCAs. I know because I'm a resume writer. I do resumes all the time. I have written several for CPCAs and they've managed to get jobs, okay? It's not a guarantee, but I'm just saying that it really all goes back to how many times are you applying and are you changing and updating your resume for every place that you're applying to? And so that has a lot to do with it. But um, if you go with the CCSP with AHIMA, you do not have to worry about an apprentice status because apprentice is an AAPC thing, okay? Again, remember, AAPC is a for-profit organization and AHIMA is a non-profit organization. So AHIMA does not require an apprentice status. They do not have that. That is an AAPC thing, okay? So that is the difference between the two. So if you're wondering, well, which one is better? It is the coder that makes the credential. It is the coder that makes the credential, not the credential. Because there are people, even with any one of these, a CPC or even the CCS, who can't code because they were only taught to pass a certification exam and then they continue to not study and not prepare themselves. That's the problem. So don't look at it like, oh, I have the CPC, so that means um, I'm in demand and I know everything. No, if you are not studying, you don't know. The same thing if you have a CCS, don't rest on your laurels for my CCS folks thinking that, oh, well, I passed it and I don't have to study no more. And, you know, that's it. I, I, I was barely able to pass, but I passed and I have my CCS. No, if that is you, then you're, you're on the road to, you know, heartache. Because again, if you are getting tested when you are out there applying, because you will be tested to assess your skills. If you are not able to pass those tests, you are not going to get calls back. So, Again, it goes back to personal responsibility of going through and making sure that you are preparing yourself and stop wondering, well, which one is better? And I need to get all these credentials so that I can be better. No, you just need one. That's all you need is just one. Because even the job listings, they're only asking you to be certified through either AHIMA or AAPC. And sometimes they will list the specific credentials that they're looking for. Um, sometimes they'll list credentials on there that are not even existent anymore. Okay, so it really all depends on if they've updated their um, <laughs> their job listing template. Okay, so that's the thing that you have to think about, guys. It's not about, well, if I have this one, it's better. No, you as the coder can make yourself a fantastic coder by studying. And that's where a lot of people try not to skip that part. They try to skip that part because they say, well, I'm tired of reading. I'm tired of reading is 90% of what we do in a day. Reading is 90% of what we do in a day. So if you are not doing that, if you're not applying yourself, it's going to be even harder for you because you're really not going to understand. And there's nothing more frustrating 
than not understanding something. So again, guys, there is not one credential that is better than the other. The only reason that I say that the CCS is the gold standard is because it says that you have mastered inpatient and outpatient coding. That is the only reason that I say it, okay? Um, and the, yes, that exam is very difficult. It is difficult for even seasoned healthcare professionals. It is still very, very difficult. Uh, but again, because you have mastered, it says you have mastered inpatient and outpatient coding. And so that's the thing that you have to think about. Again, there is not one that is better than the other. No matter how many times I say it, I still get the question, but I'm gonna say it one more time. There is not one certification that is better than the other. It is the coder that makes the certification, not the other way around, not the certification that makes the coder. It is the coder that makes the certification. Because think about this again, I had the CCA for 13 years. I say this all the time. I had it for 13 years and I stubbornly held on to that CCA because I wanted to show people what a CCA was capable of because a lot of people had a misconception about what it was and what a CCA could do. And when I started running circles around people and I was able to train providers, I was tra able to train other medical coders, I was able to train nurses all with my CCA. You know, that changed hearts and minds everywhere, you know, that I had worked. So that's the thing that I want y'all to understand. It is not the credential that makes the coder. It is the coder that makes the credential. It is the coder that makes the credential. So make sure that you understand that. Stop getting um, hooked up on those, on that hamster wheel of, oh, this one's better, oh, this one's better. Guys, you can have a string of credentials and not know a hill of beans if you're not careful. You have to make sure that you're studying and you have to make sure that you understand what these credentials mean. If you are wanting to go on the outpatient side and you only understand the CPT book, of course, the ICD-10-CM book and the Hicks Picks book, if you only understand those, then your two options are the CCSP from AHIMA or the CPC from AAPC. If you are saying, hey, I'm good on both sides, but I, I kind of want to go with the entry-level exam and see where I land, and you take the CCA, that means that you know inpatient and outpatient you can code with ICD-10 CM, ICD-10 PCS, and CPT, okay? Um, you do need to know, of course, about Higgs Picks, but you do not need the Higgs Picks book for that exam, okay? Um, and the same thing for the other one as well, okay? Um, the uh, CCSP, okay? So CCA, CCS, um, I'm sorry, CCA and CCS are the two that you have to know, ICD-10 CM, ICD-10 PCS, and CPT, all right? So that's the thing that you have to be aware of, guys. Again, with the credentials, it's just a certification exam, and it just says which one, which, uh, which coding setting you're proficient at. That's all it says, okay? So make sure whichever one you start out with, you just start out with one. This is why I encourage my audience to start out with one certification, and when you start out with one certification for the first two years, you're able to really concentrate and get to know the industry before you start adding on these additional credentials. Because these additional credentials cost continuing education units. It gets more expensive the more that you add on. And guys, you're not hurting anybody but yourself when you're adding on a bunch of credentials and you have no idea what to do with it. It will not get you more money. It will not get you more prestige because again, there's a lot of people who have a lot of credentials who don't know a lot about coding. So be careful what you spend your money on when it comes to these credentials. Make sure that you understand what it means and what you can use this for. And when you get additional credentials, make sure that it's not overlapping with another certification. So that way you don't run into that issue of, oh, this overlaps with this one, okay? Because again, if you're gonna add on anything, it's because it's gonna be something else that is more, um, more specialty in the um, industry like CDI, okay? 
not like specialty for ed <laughs> you know the emergency department not like that guys you want something that's if you want to get more specialized in something it's you know trauma registry or you know any of those things those are things that are separate because it's different from the medical coding certifications at least that's just my advice anyway guys this is a business you guys got to remember that health information is still a business it is still a business these organizations will still try to sell you these things um the schools will still try to sell you these things as well these um certifications so be uh, very concerned about what you're getting yourself into and and don't just believe whoever make sure that you're doing your research as well i tell you guys all the time go directly to the association websites and when it says recommended it's just a recommendation it is not a requirement okay requirement is something that is different requirement means yes you have to have it and especially when it comes to reading these um uh, credential uh, descriptions, then that's when you have to really, okay, required means I need to have this or that, you know. But if it says it's recommended, it's just giving you a suggestion. And only because they know from the people before you um, what it took for them to pass those certification exams. I'm just saying. So hopefully this has helped you. Um, and if it has, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.